turning to the Word of God, and we're turning to the Acts of the Apostles this morning, chapter 28. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28, please. Paul the Apostle, along with 270 other, five other people, have just been through two weeks, 14 days of heavy storm upon the sea. Now they have suffered shipwreck, and now they're stranded on a little island. And Paul the Apostle and these others, 275 other people that were with them, find themselves now on a, stranded on a little island. And in Acts chapter 28 and verse 1, we read these words, And when they were escaped, they, then they knew that the island was called Melita, which is now Malta. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, every one, because of the present rain and because of the cold. When Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a vapor out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he, Paul, shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a God. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. Right along the pathway of life, in fact, every day of life, you couldn't be careful enough, neither could you be vigilant enough to keep yourselves or ourselves out of harm's way. This week alone, I lost count, in fact, how many young people were killed in our roads. In fact, I think it was Wednesday morning, Tracy says, isn't that terrible? You hear nothing only of death now in the news. And you know, child of God this morning, or everybody that's gathered here, you couldn't be careful enough and vigilant enough. And it's not just looking out for yourselves, but it's looking out for others. There's five young people from Donegal who were alive last week, and this morning they're in eternity. And for those of you who are not saved in this meeting this morning, listen. Please consider this this morning, where you will be in eternity. You could be in eternity this time tomorrow. And there's only one way into heaven this morning, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only way. And if you forsake Christ, you're forsaken heaven. You're going to hell. And if you die unsaved, you're going to leave it a hard job for me to bury you, but I'll preach the gospel anyway. It's time to seek the Lord, for none of us knows what a day will bring for any one of us. And we need to be saved, friends. And we need to be prepared to meet God, no matter who we are. And Christ is the Savior this morning, and He's the only Savior there is. Make Him yours this day before it's too late. Jesus says, No man cometh to the Father but by me. But you couldn't be careful enough to keep yourselves out of harm's way. 
You see, child of God this morning, it's the same in the spirit of your life. You know, I know, we know this morning that we couldn't be careful enough. You couldn't be vigilant enough. My goodness, what did the apostle Peter write in 1 Peter 5 and 8? He said, be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may desire, devour. And you know, child of God, this morning, it's so important that we be careful and vigilant in these days. During the awful dark days of the troubles, we were always taught this. Personal security has to be your top priority. Remember this, the terrorist has the upper hand. Why? He knows how he's going to attack, he knows where he's going to attack, and he knows when he's going to attack. He just needs to get it right once, whereby we have to get it right all the time. And it's the same child of God in the Christian life. We have to be vigilant. We have to be careful at all times, child of God. The enemy attacks when we least expect. God wants to speak to us this morning because here in our Scripture reading, the Lord's not going to speak to us this morning through a roaring lamb. God wants to speak to us this morning through what we see as a venomous vapor. Paul the apostle had been through a lot in these last 14 days. Suffered a great storm, and the storm was controlled by a hurricane. Then he suffered shipwreck. And every man had a swim for himself. And when we come to chapter 8, there he is, standing stranded and shivering in the cold. And you know, when you've been through so much, I can tell you something now. Your spirits can be down. And when your spirits are down, you're vulnerable for anything. Now you wonder, is there a Christian here this morning, a brother and sister, and you've been through a lot lately, and your spirits are down? And you know as well as I do this morning that when your spirit is down, you're vulnerable this morning as much as I'm as vulnerable. And we're going to look this morning at this text that the Lord has laid upon my heart this morning. It's down at verse number 3, right at the very end, and here's the text this morning. I want you to look at it. It says in Acts 28 and verse 3, There came a vapor out of the heat, and fastened, on his hand. That's my text. There came a vapor out of the heat and fastened on his hand. There came a vapor out of the heat and fastened on his hand. I say there came a vapor out of the heat and fasten on his hand. I want you to notice verse number 3 because it says there, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, you know, Paul was busy. Paul's the mark of a good leader, you know. Paul didn't think of himself above anybody else. Paul was going about as a leader. Wasn't afraid to get down with his men. Wasn't afraid to get out. I remember Tracy and I visiting the church not so very long ago, it was one of my Sundays off, the Lord's Days, I was free that day, and we went to a local church, and Tracy asked the elder standing at the door, she says, 
where do we go now? She says, see one of the deacons because that's not my job. Well, that was some welcome, wasn't it? See one of the deacons, that's not my job. And you know, there are pastors and there are ministers who do think of themselves a wee cut above everybody else. And it's wrong. I think a good leader gets down with his people and works with them and gets in among them, not afraid of getting their hands dirty. But I want you to notice Paul is a great leader, you know. He's out gathering sticks. But look at the text. It says, there came a viper out of the heat. I want you to notice the timing of the text. Paul's gathering these sticks, you know, and he's gathering up all what he could to put on the fire. And as he was working and as he was placing them on the fire, there came a viper out. And a viper is a deadly, deadly, deadly creature. In fact, a viper, once it injects its venom into your body, you're dead within minutes, dead within minutes. And it says, and there came a vapor out of the heat. I want you to notice the timing now. The vapor attacked him. When it got the heat. You see, I want you to notice this vapor didn't attack Paul right away. You see, it's winter time when Paul landed in Melita, and it was cold. It was the winter season, the month of November, some commentators said it was. And that meant the vapor was dormant. It went into hibernation. But Paul picked it up, you know. And he carried it. I don't know how far he carried it. He thought it was a stick because a vapor is just about that length, but the shape of a stick. And as Paul carried it, it done him no harm because it was dormant. It was dormant. But I want to tell you this this morning. What is dormant is not dead. What is dormant is not dead. Because when Paul the Apostle this morning placed the sticks along with the vapor that he was carrying onto the fire, suddenly the heat hit it. And the vapor revived. And the vapor attacked him. You see, child of God this morning, this is something that God wants us to know. This is something God wants you to see. Every one of us, myself included, are carrying vapors in these lives of ours. Oh, we're saved, good enough. Oh, glory to God, we're saved. But there are vapors in each and every one of us that's capable to attack us at any time when the moment's right. You see, Matthew Henry had this to say. He says, there's a wickedness and there's an evil in all of us that's capable of doing anything, only it's the grace of God that's keeping a lid on it. But child of God, wonder are you carrying a vapor this morning, or I'm carrying a vapor. It's dormant at the minute. It's not attacking us at the minute. It's doing us no harm at the minute. It's carrying no threat at the minute, but we're carrying it. Just like Paul. And as Paul carried the vapor among the sticks, suddenly the vapor came out of the heat and attacked. It only 
takes the heat of one moment to revive some vapor that may be laying in your heart this morning and in mine. Might be the vapor of anger this morning. I'm telling you we could all be carrying that one. It lays dormant within us whenever, whenever this morning life's going well, life's going, going good. But I'll tell you, in the heat of some moment, the vapor of anger can soon strike up and attack us. I'll tell you, it came back to bait Moses. Or it may be this morning the vapor of deceit. Oh, believers can carry the vapor of deceit this morning. Don't tell me we can't. I think Ananias and Sapphira carried the great price for carrying that vapor. Christian businessman a number of years ago, four and a half years ago, was doing his books up. He was well known for his testimony, his honesty, and his decency. He had a great testimony, still has, greatly liked among businessmen. Till one day he was doing his books up, and he was 200 pounds over his whatever, whatever quota he was, or he was going to be penalized because of this 200 pound. And he thought to himself, now, I'll hide this 200 pound from him. This once. And he did. And a year later, the tax boys come round to do an inspection. And the 200 pound was flagged. And the tax men challenged them about this 200 pound. It wasn't 2,000 or 2 million, it was 200. And he confessed what he did to the tax man. And the test, tax man got his books and they scrutinized his books back 10 years. And as they scrutinized his books back 10 years, they couldn't find one fault. but they penalized him very heavy for the 200. In the heat of the moment, the vapor of deceit was revived within him. And I'll tell you this, it came back to bite him. Now, child of God, you listen, this is the Lord speaking to you and it's the Lord speaking to me. There are vapors that we are carrying this morning, and we need to be careful and vigilant. They might be lying dormant now. They mightn't be raising their head now. They mightn't be attacking you now. They mightn't be any sign of movement now. But in the heat of some moment, in the heat of some moment, it'll revive that vapor to attack. The timing of the vapor's attack, there came a vapor out of the heat. Look at the tightness of the vapor's effect. It says there came a vapor out of the heat and fastened. Didn't just nip them on the end of the finger, you know. It says there came a vapor out of the heat and fastened. On his hand. Once this vapor came out, out of the heat, it fastened tight on Paul's hand. And this vapor wasn't for letting go. 
And as soon as it came out of the heat, it fastened on his hand. And it was fastening on his hand to do what? To fill his veins with its poisonous, poisonous venom. The heat triggered the attack. And the vapor fastened. Fastened to his heart. I'm telling you, when a vapor got a hold of you, it was there to bring you down. You see, spiritual vapors are like that this morning. I'll tell you something now. The vapor of hate, hate, H-A-T-E, the vapor of hate fastens itself on people. Do you remember the story of Absalom? Absalom had a sister. And do you remember Amnon wickedly and despised his sister? So much so, so much so this morning that the vapor of hate fastened on Absalom and it was fastened on him for two years. And the Bible says after two years, after two years, the vapor of hate was still latched him. And it had filled him with its deadly poison of hate, so much so, Absalom planned Amnon's murder. I'll tell you, vapors hold fast, you know. Tell me something. This is not George McConnell, this is the Lord. Is there a vapor has attacked and fastened to you, brother? Is there some vapor this morning that has, a, has attacked and is fastened to you, sister? The vapor of deceit, maybe. The vapor of anger, maybe. The vapor of hate. Boys, I'm telling you, Christians can carry that in about. I'm telling you, there's many vapors we need to be careful for. I'll tell you one, the vapor of lust. Go you to 2 Samuel chapter 11 and you'll see the vapor of lust attacking David and latching on to David. As soon as it fastened to his hand, it started to fill him with a deadly poison, so much so. Do you remember that moment when he saw Bathsheba washing herself? In the heat of the moment, that's when the vapor of lust attacked. And it not only attacked David, it actually fastened to him. So much so that he sent for her. He lay with her and murdered the husband of her. Child of God this morning, there came a vapor out of the heat and fastened to his hand. I can tell you the vapor of envy is a great one too. I'm telling you, child of God, notice this here this morning. It not only came out of the heat, it fastened. It held on. Tell me this, is there a vapor this morning that's holding on to your life that's fastened to you? Vapors brought great men down. I'll tell you, they bring great men of God down too. And I wonder this morning, is there a brother and sister in Christ you've been attacked and the vapor has fastened itself to you and you can almost feel this morning it's poison running through your veins. 
taming of the vapors attack. It came out of the fire, the tightness of the vapors effect, attack. It fastened. Did you notice this, the target of the vapors attack? It was his hand. Whose hand did the vapor attack the working hand? Whose hand did the vapor attack, attack Paul's hand this morning? Didn't attack anybody else's hand. Attack Paul's. And I'm telling you this morning, when you're in the Lord's work and you're serving and you're bringing glory to God and you're exalting the Lord Jesus Christ, I can tell you something. I'm telling you, you're a, you're a target for the vapor. You're a target for the vapor. But there's something else we'll want to see in this this morning, the triumphing over the vapor's attack. Look at verse number 5. It says in verse number 5, And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. I'm telling you, friend, out of the heat this vapor attacked and fastened onto Paul. But he didn't wait to see was it going to let go. Immediately, the moment it fastened to him, Paul shook it off into the fire. Paul had a choice to let it stay and wait and hope, or he had the choice of shaking it off. I joined the local faith mission prayer union shortly after I was saved. And it was held in the home of Bertie Brush up about the Ocher Road out of Ochnachloy. Remember one night there was a Methodist minister came to, to preach that night, or share a wee word, and he told a story. He told a story about a godly young man, married young man, who served in the Sunday school, who was very active in his church, godly, Christ, young, Christ-like young man. There came a young lady to the, to the area to teach in the local school, and she was a gifted organist. And as she came to the church, he took a wee shine to her. Now, this young lady did not flaunt herself, did not entice this. In fact, the minister said to this day she knew none of it. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't get the feelings away. On a Saturday night, he got down on his knees and said, Lord, unless you speak to me tomorrow morning, I don't know what I'm going to do or how I'm over going to come this. Maybe there's something, someone here this morning, and this is a type of vapor that's fastened to you. You cannot, and you've tried, shake it off. That night, that Saturday night, the minister went to his bed. He had a sermon all prepared, and the Lord awoke him in the middle of the night and gave him a text to preach from. He spent the whole night preparing a message, and the text was 1 Corinthians 10, 13. This was the text, There hath no temptation hath taken you, but such as is common as man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with the temptation also will make a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear it or conquer it. The young man felt so guilty. Happy married man with three kids. Yet the vapor of lust came to him. He said that Lord's Day morning, the minister spoke to him as if he was the only person in the congregation. And he had to speak to the minister after. 
He shared with the minister, and he promised to made the minister promise, you never say this to this lady, you never say it to my wife. He shared with him what was on his heart. And the minister said this, young man, seek Christ in this matter. Keep yourself pure with God. God has provided the way of escape. How? Because that young organist, her last Sunday was the following Sunday. She had to move away to Belfast. Do you know what that young man said to that minister? I never thought a happy married man, I never once thought I would have feelings for anybody else. The minister said to him, There's feelings within all of us that's capable of tempting us to do anything. That's why we need Christ every moment of every day. And child of God, if a vapor of some shape or form has attacked you and has fastened to you this morning, listen, you can have victory over it this morning. Because the Lord Jesus himself said this, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall harm you. You know what that means? God gives us the victory over every temptation if we seek him for it. Paul, there came a vapor out of the heat fastened on his hand. But he sought to get rid of it. Wonders there's someone here this morning and a vapor has fastened to you. I want to use the same words as the Methodist minister, seek Christ no matter. Keep yourself pure for God. How we couldn't be careful enough, child of God, or vigilant enough. No wonder our closing hymn says, I need thee every hour. We know the Lord will bless his word to our hearts. We're going to sing 600.